And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is backfire. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you've got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to be up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website, or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. Also, be sure to use the Discord link at the top of the description below to join our Discord server to get behind-the-scenes access and first uh, information about things that we launch them. So it's a great place for us to talk to you and you talk to us and really get some cool things going on behind the scenes. So check that out. All right, so today we're talking about Backfire. And first and foremost, to those of you who missed, I am so sorry for not doing Tuesday's podcast. A couple of things had come up that unfortunately precluded my fitting, filming of it, but. Hopefully, we are settling into a more stable situation from a podcast standpoint. But, so in the last episode, I talked about the founder's letter that I sent about our price increase and some of the changes that we're making. And all in all, I am very excited about that project. And it has continued to unfold. And as it continues to unfold, there's more and more information that is coming out that I'm interested in, in uh, kind of really fine-tuning. I do want to share more with you guys, but unfortunately, just because how nebulous everything is, I can't really give you specifics until we really lock it down because I don't want to say something and then not be able to have it work. So uh, more details about that will be coming, I promise. But we, in the meantime, are continuing to make good changes. But I was shocked. There was one thing that we had hoped on. So we'd planned on October being... October for us is always a slow month. I don't exactly know why or what causes it. It seems to me like it should be a relatively big month because a lot of businesses, I would imagine, would be looking for employees, uh, gifts for Christmas and things like that. So it's definitely taking a little bit of a, of a challenge for me to figure out why. But October is regularly a very slow month for us. And it's become a bit of a, kind of a bit of a meme. But this time around, we thought that we'd have a better chance of making October big because we assumed that when we sent out the letter announcing the price change, we would see a large volume in purchasing related to price-sensitive customers, right? That there was a large cadre of people who are more price-sensitive and they would say, oh, the prices are going up, we should buy right now. And the exact opposite happened. We ended up seeing a significant decline in our ordering after we put out the letter. And it got me thinking, I, 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 it puzzled me a lot. And then I was rereading the letter. And it dawned on me that maybe I had misinterpreted what the customer's biggest issues were. I had always assumed that the biggest issue that, most, that stopped most people from purchasing was price. And so by saying, well, the prices are going to get worse, so buy now, it would get people off the fence. But I think the opposite might have been what people interpreted. Rather than hearing the prices are going up, I think what people really read out of the letter was, the product is not as good as it should be. And so what people were actually doing is they're saying, well, then I'm going to wait to buy until they fix the product, which, by the way, the product is not broken, and it is perfectly good, and I love it, and I love using mine. It's just that we're making improvements to the product as we go forward. But beside the point, that was an interesting revelation to think about. Now, do I know that that's what's actually happening? No, I don't. Do I know that, you know, it's really that people are really concerned about that? No. For all I know, people are short on money. It's a budgetary season. People are maybe not making as much money as they want, or the fact that the, fourth, the third quarter numbers came in and they weren't very good at their company, and so things are kind of getting tightened, right? It's, it's hard to know exactly what factors are limiting sales, and to be honest, it's entirely related to the fact that maybe the marketing's gone stale. Maybe that's the issue, right? There's, there's so many factors, there's so many variables that could cause people to buy or not buy that are entirely unpredictable and entirely unknowable in some way. So, at best, I can do is speculate on what I think might be some of those factors and help mitigate them as best I can. And we are doing some things like improving the marketing and freshening up the photos and doing some cool things with YouTube shorts that we are going to announce and do soon. So there's a lot of elements to this that are, I think, evolving behind the scenes to help improve the numbers. But in the meantime, it's, it's shocking me because, you know, what I think I can, I can really take away from it, and I think this is the thing that most small business owners should take away from this situation is this. What you think is the biggest issue to causing people to not buy is probably not necessarily the biggest issue, even if the customer themselves says it is. And here's what I mean by that. If you were to ask people what's the biggest issue, people would see, a lot of people would say price. But their actions don't necessarily show that price is their biggest concern. 
And so really, I think a better way to think about it is when people say, well, the biggest issue is price. What they're really saying is you haven't proven to me that the quality and the product is worth the price you're charging for it. Not that I wouldn't pay that price were to you to prove that it is. Or another way to think about it is when people are interviewed, this was something we talked about in my, my operates and ma- operations and management class in my master's degree program. They talked about a study, and I have to go find this study, but it was a study that was a survey of individuals who were asked about what car, what were the important features in buying a car, right? And think about this for yourself. When you, you know, what, what are the most important features when you shop for a car that you're looking for? What does everyone say? Virtually everyone says safety, reliability, and affordability for the purposes of repair, right? and affordability of the car itself. However, when they ranked the cars that people actually bought, of course, safety and reliability were important factors, but they were not often the deciding factors. And you can tell that because several cars with very virtually identical reliability and virtually identical safety, out of those options, people would choose the prettiest one or the one that came in the colors that were the most popular at the time. So a better way to think of it is safety and reliability are fundamental to the product. If you don't have them, people won't buy at all. People assume a baseline for cars of safety and reliability. It has to be there. What they really make a decision on which of the cars to buy is other things. That being said, if you ask them, they'll talk about the fundamentals, right? So another way to think about it, and apply to us is to people say, well, what's, what's the fundamentals? Well, people say, okay, the price is the biggest issue. But maybe that isn't really the biggest issue. Maybe that's just fundamentally it's an expensive product. And so we need to do our better job of explaining why it's worth the money that it is. And I know it is. I know it's worth the money. I use all of these things every day. I know exactly how much it costs to make them. I know exactly how much it costs to pay the people to make them. And I know exactly how much our marketing expenses cost. I know how much it costs to have our rent and utilities. I know how much it costs to do all of the aspects of the business. And I know how much it costs to make this product in reality, not kind of like in theory, well, what should it cost? No, I know exactly what it does cost. And so I know how expensive the product has to be to exist. And so because of that, I realize that the price is not really the issue. It's the value proposition. And so that value proposition problem is a marketing problem, fundamentally. It is our job through better marketing, through better videos, through better explanations, through better graphics, through better things to tell the story and explain to people why the value proposition is there. And I know the value proposition is there, A, both as a consumer of my own product, as a user of these journals, as someone who writes in his journal, who uses his journal at work, who does all these different things. As someone in that basket, I know the value is there. It's explaining that value to someone who doesn't know that. And that's hard. It really is. And that's why I think the letter had a backfiring effect. I think people thought that price was the biggest thing, but really it's not about the price. It's about the value proposition. And so when they were presented with the idea that the value proposition was not there in the first place, they balked at the idea. And they're going to wait until the product is improved. Now, that was probably my fault. It's probably my fault for phrasing it the way I did. The product, of course, is not compromised in any real way that would make it not any, would make it less valuable, right? And a lot of the compromises that we have made in the past have been related to improvements that we wanted to make. They were ideas to make the product better, and we decided at the time that to do that would be too expensive. But I probably didn't phrase it the right way when I wrote that letter, when I look back on it. So here we are struggling once again to get through in October, and that's always the way it goes. But November and December are coming soon, and Christmas is a huge season for us. In fact, almost 40% of our annual sales will come in the 45 days between November 1st and December 15th. And it's daunting to think about it. It's exhausting to think about it, but it's also exciting because it means that, you know, some of this trouble that we've had financially for a little while will probably have a bit of reprieve from it. And the hope is that that reprieve will also last longer than the 45 days ahead of us and we'll be able to carry on through the first and second quarters of next year. So we'll be able to say, okay, we have time to get everything squared away and be able to get this new marketing machine operational and moving faster and more forward 
so that we can get the product to more people and get people more educated on how this is the best product. And I think it'll work. I mean, I always think it'll work. It's my job to know that it'll work. I know that it'll work. I really do. And if it doesn't work, we'll find something that will. That's the life of a small business owner. You just keep marching forward. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in next week for the next podcast. Uh, and don't forget to check that notification bell as well uh, to get our uh, subscribe and notification bell to get our latest podcast right away. If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, accessory, or anything else we sell, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at meridicreative.co. Or you can contact us via email on Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message, all the usuals. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible, but we do appreciate your patience. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Discord via that Discord link in the top of the description. We do respond to people there. Sometimes people ask questions that other community members will know the answer to, and they'll answer even before we get to it. So it's kind of fun to see that happen. But if you have a quick question you want to place an order over the phone, please do feel free to call us at 414-434-9001. We're available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. You can also text us at that number as well, 414-434-9001. If for whatever reason you call us and you don't get a hold of us either during business hours or after hours, please do leave us a voicemail. We do listen to them. We respond to them. And if you're calling about an order specifically, please try to include the order number in the voicemail itself. It'll start with the letter S and then be followed by a series of digits. It just helps us identify who we're talking to and what we're talking about. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. Both a review on the podcast and whatever app you're listening on, as well as a review on the product itself. You can go to murdercreative.co slash reviews to read all of our amazing reviews. There's a button there that says leave us a good review. That'll take you to Google. Um, where you can leave a Google review. Most of our reviews at this point are still on Facebook under the Murdy Creative Co. Facebook page. We're still working on migrating them over from Facebook to Google, and uh, that process is just taking a little while. You may ask yourself, why are we migrating from Facebook to Google? Well, a big part of it is because Google uses those reviews as part of their SEO optimization and how they rank us as a website. So, one, so those, those reviews do really help us improve our ranking. So please do leave us a review. Uh, we really appreciate that. If for whatever reason you leave us a bad review, it is deeply important to me personally that everyone has a good experience with the company and with the product. So please, 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 before you leave us a bad review, reach out to us and give us an opportunity to make things right. We will. We will do everything we can, returning, refunding, whatever it takes. We want to make you happy. We don't want you to look at us as the bad guys. So give us an opportunity to fix things before you leave us a bad review. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising, so please tell your friends about the company and the product. If you want to get a little something for doing that, go to log in on the website. Once you log in, you'll be able to go to the bottom left-hand corner of the main page. There's a little tab that says rewards. When you click on that, it opens up a little sub panel. That panel has all of the rewards points that you have earned, and you're also able to get the shareable link there. When you share that link with your family and friends, they get $10 off their first purchase, and you get $10 of in-store credit when they make that purchase. So it's a great way to help them and help you in all this whole process, and we really appreciate everyone who does that. If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. I'm always happy to talk about just about anything, and I want to give you guys what you're looking for. If you're looking for multiple gifts, uh, multiple binders, journals, folios, anything we sell for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, do feel free to check out our book discounts on our website. All you need to do is mix and match to your heart's desire, add everything to your cart, and then hit checkout. The system will auto-detect the total cart quantity, so it doesn't matter what specifically you get, but it'll detect the total cart quantity, and then it'll apply the appropriate bulk discount for the, co- the total quantity itself. So you want to get 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, it, se- it thinks that you've got 50. So that's the way you can do that, and you can get advantage of that and all of those other good things. You can purchase from there. Otherwise, if you have specific questions or specific quantity desires or you're looking for large, large numbers or anything like that, you can always reach out to us, sales at murdycreative.co, sales at murdycreative.co. We'd be happy to walk you through the bulk discount program. If you're looking for a custom engraved item, we have no minimum order quantities and no setup fees. It's a simple flat fee, normally about $15. It can depend a little bit on the size and complexity, but to be able to do that, to get that custom logo on something, all you need to do is go to pretty much any product page on the website. There's an add custom logo button. When you click that logo, add logo button, it'll take you to the custom version of that product. There's a button there that says add custom logo. You click on that, it'll launch the customizer. When you open up that customizer, you can upload images, you can add text, you can resize, reposition, do all sorts of fun things to make it your own, and then you hit add to cart. That specific design that you've created when you check out is tied to your order. So when we go to make it, all we need to do is pull up the design that you created and just put it on the journal itself for the binder or whatever. And so there's no editing that's necessary. We can do it exactly as you've had it. Copyright images obviously have their own issues. So please, obviously, if you're concerned about that, reach out to us. And if we have concerns about copyright images that you've added, we'll reach out to you and confirm that you have permission beforehand. But go ahead and do that. Also, the bulk discount applies to the, bulk di- or to the, uh, the engravings. So if you want to get your company's logo on 20 different things, 
that bulk discount also applies to those. So it's a great way to get something for your employees or for your team. Uh, and it can mean a lot to us and it can mean a lot to them. So definitely check that out. We're happy to help in all of those ways. And if you have anything that you see that doesn't have that add custom logo button, do feel free to send us an email, sales at meridicreative.co. We can always create mock-ups as well as custom order links for those products if they're not listed as a custom item. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.